Hello everyone, I'm Alexandra Munoz and I will be doing a Pecha Kucha presentation on technology and education. Before I begin, a little bit about myself. I graduated with my bachelor's degree in athletic training education from NMSU in 2013. Currently, I am the assistant athletic trainer at Las Cruces High School. I am contracted with them through Mountain View. I actually came about this job on the athletic training alumni group page we have on Facebook. This is my first year in a teaching role, so I'm doing my best to incorporate what I have learned so far in the master's program into the classroom setting. What I am finding is that technology is a huge part of my students' lives. They are always on their phones using various social sites. The most popular ones are Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, and Instagram. It stuns me to see how much has changed in the last 10 years. When I was in high school, smartphones were barely becoming a thing and the majority of these social sites were non-existent. What is technology in education? According to the Association for Educational Communications and Technology, it is defined as the study and ethical practice of facilitating learning and improving performance by creating, using, and managing appropriate technological processes and resources. We are so fortunate to live in a decade where technology has just taken off and there are multiple tools at our dispense for classroom use, ranging from student interactive to teacher tools, even tools for teacher self-improvement. An added bonus, the majority of them are even accessible on your smartphone. Here are some of the most commonly used. Nearpod is used to create interactive lessons. When studying a specific topic, you can give quizzes, surveys, drawing activities, and so much more. As a teacher, you are able to view and access all your students' progress and also see reports. This tool is great for ensuring that students are truly involved in their learning. Typeform is a free site that allows you to create surveys, review the data and reports on their webpage, and export and analyze that data. There are various different formats of questionnaires that can be used. There are already prepared templates or you can get creative and start from scratch. Each question is asked one at a time. One of my new personal favorites is Kahoot. It's like a game show that it has music and timers. You can make up any kind of quiz you want and you can track your students' progress and see where they are in their learning. It even awards points for how quickly they respond or how well they do. This particular tool allows students to play from their phones or even their computers. So Creative is much like Kahoot because it also allows for web-based student responses. The difference, however, is that it allows teachers to go more in-depth with the assessments and there isn't the pressure of a ticking clock. This makes it more of a traditional assessment tool versus a game. Quizzes, surveys, and even exit slips can be created using this tool. Jing for screencasting is a quite simple and free tool to use for creating screenshots or screencasts. It is accessible through your desktop once downloaded. Compatible with both PC and Mac, any snapshot you take is automatically saved and can even be used to make videos. Any saved material can be shared through email, blog, Twitter, etc. Prezi takes a basic and standard PowerPoint and allows you to incorporate movement and energy into your slideshow. This site is also free and students don't have to worry about having to have licenses to the software when creating presentations. This graphic tool gives any presentation more flair and more life. Book Track Classroom is one that I will definitely be considering in the near future because it allows you to create soundtracks to text or even your own stories using public domain songs, ambient sounds, and sound effects. This tool is extremely beneficial for those students who struggle to stay focused with reading. Zaption allows you to upload videos from any site or use one you've created and make them more interactive by adding links, questions, surveys, or, and even drawings. There are a variety of topics to choose from and you can access videos that have already been published. There is a basic free account or a paid account that allows for more access. PictoChart is a web-based tool that allows students to create infographics. Students can use their own images, visuals from the internet, or icons from the tool itself. By combining images, text, charts, and other visuals, students can make information come to life. ThingLink is a neat tool in which students can easily add interactive aspects to images they've created, maps, photographs, and other types of visuals. It really brings more meaning to the statement, a picture is worth a thousand words. A podcast is a digital audio file 
made available on the internet for downloading to a computer or mobile device, typically available as a series. Oftentimes, a weekly podcast is available to subscribers. This tool is a nice combination of a radio broadcast and blog. They are available in a variety of topics. The nice part about all these tech tools is that they are all free. However, some of them have paid options that offer more perks. As previously mentioned, the majority are available on your mobile device. In this ever-changing world, tech is the way to go. I have found that it is one of the better ways to engage the young learner and encourages them to take charge in their learning. The not so great part about this new style of learning is that some schools may not have access to fancy tech equipment that would allow them to utilize these tools in their classroom. Areas with greater poverty, of course, would be at the shorter end of the stick and would have to come up with alternate ways to get creative in the classroom. The grueling part of dealing with extremely tech-savvy youth is that you as an educator would have to be equally as tech-savvy. If you don't understand how to properly use these tools, then the use of them might be poorly executed in the classroom. It is extremely important to get to know your tech before using it with your students. These are only a few of the tools that can be used. There is a wide variety of what is available to us as teachers. I encourage you all to visit one or more of these sites and get familiar with them. You might find them useful in your instruction. Kahoot is one I'm using to prepare my students for our state competition coming up soon. Thank you for your time.